The somatosensory cortex is where all the information is processed that comes from the mechanoreceptors and the different things that help us with our touch sensation. The sensory information that we receive goes and congregates in a place called the postcentral gyrus. So this is uh, the main part of the brain that deals with somatosensory information. If we take this postcentral gyrus, we cut on either side of it and we turn it sideways, we're able to see something pretty cool take place. So this is an image of what I was just talking about. Over here we have the outside of the brain, this would be the inner side of the brain, and uh, this picture here kind of gives you an idea of where we're slicing. It's right on the postcentral gyrus. This area is very highly organized. We call this a somatotopy. So somatotopy is basically a map of the body. It's the organization of the sensory cortex so that uh, the information doesn't get all scrambled up. Although it's very clear that the sensory cortex is laid out in a map fashion, it's not very proportional. We can see here that the hip and leg area does not really cover much of the cortex at all. So uh, we don't really have a ton of sensation in this area, whereas our lips over here pretty much take up the same amount of cortex as the entire hip and upper leg combined take up. The reason that the cortex is laid out like this is because it's directly proportional to the amount of sensation or the number of nerves uh, that are dedicated to that area. So our lips are very, very sensitive as well as our hands. So you can see here that the hand is very large. So this is a very sensitive area, so it has more area in the cortex that it is taken up by. Whereas the uh, hip and the leg, they are not as sensitive, so they don't take up as much space within the cortex. So what we see here in this picture um, is the somatotopy of a normal human uh, with normal functions of their body. Sometimes though, we can have plasticity in this area of the brain. Plasticity means that it's able to change and adapt to different uh, changes that we have within our body. Plasticity can happen because of three different stimuli. One is that we have either increase or decrease stimulation of an area. So for example, if I did an experiment and I was constantly stimulating my shoulder every single day, all day long, I would have uh, more of the somatotopy would be designated to that shoulder after some time. The same thing could happen if we decrease the stimuli. So if I stopped using my hands altogether and there was no longer any stimulus, then uh, the somatotopy or the, the postcentral gyrus would be able to use those neurons to dedicate them to an area that is uh, more often stimulated. The second possibility is because of amputation. So if somebody loses a leg or a hand, um, those neurons that were designated to um, process the information coming from that area will then change and they will be uh, used for a different area of the body instead. And the last one is training plasticity. So this is very similar to uh, the one I already told you about where I'm constantly touching my shoulder. Um, but you can actually train any part of your body to react uh, to stimulus or to be more sensitive if you do this over a period of time.